Hi, you're listening to the Dragon Kings Podcast. This is episode two. In this episode, Robert and Tim talk about music. One of the interesting aspects of Dragon Kings is that music is a part of this. Music is going to be a part of this role-playing game world or universe, as you call it. Um, Where are you currently at with the music of Dragon Kings? We have already uh, basically outlined the entire uh, CD of songs. I think think it totals out 12 different tracks at this point. Um, We envisioned, or I should say, basically it started out with my vision of telling the story of one critical hero from start to finish and his particular adventure across the the world of dragon kings across kytus mm-hmm. which is the uh the name of the world each song basically carries that guy's story forward as he gets uh gets caught up in various uh larger than life events that are going on uh, on that particular world so uh, from that outline we've got uh, basically all of the songs are all uh, at least mapped out, and we have uh, scratch tracks for most of the rhythm and uh, and guitar tracks on all of that as it stands right now. We got into the studios just really last week to record in earnest a couple of songs, trying to get final tracks down on a couple so that we can we can share them with people and see you know give people an idea of the direction that the music is going. So Mike Stone is. Uh, working out of uh, his studio with uh, AJ the drummer. They're both in Wisconsin. I'm here in Las Vegas where I'm working with Mark Stevens, a guitar player I've worked with. I play bass guitar and and do most of the backing vocals. Mm -hmm. We're doing all of that in a studio here under the direction of the project's producer, Frank Klopacki, uh, who's got a pretty long resume of doing uh, a, a ton of different progressive music and and rock music, as well as a, a great big bunch of uh, uh, computer game music as well. You can check out his resume if you go to uh, dragonkingsproject.com and, and click on, on the various links. So, again, we're, we're at a point now where within probably a couple of weeks of the time of the recording this podcast of having quite a bit of, of material to actually share, and that's, that's pretty exciting. We'll get some final tracks out there and people can see the direction that we're going. That sounds great. I'm sure everyone's uh, interested to see how to to listen to the music. Sure. Hey, taste taste in music is is very subjective, but we're we're you know I think I've laid out there that we're trying to create sort of a hard progressive rock feel in the in the the same uh, vein as uh, you know like uh, Rush's Twenty One Twelve or or Pink Floyd's The Wall uh, and and to an extent even Queensrÿche's uh, Operation Mind Crime and obviously since we've got a, a key guy writing the music who's who's from that band there's probably going to be some some similarities in in musical uh in, in musical strength and power right there yeah we're definitely looking forward to it so we've seen the lyrics from the song lotus warrior do mm-hmm. you care to delve into some of them yeah i would um uh, assuming that everybody has a chance to to take a look at that what this is at this point in the story our hero has uh uh, he's on the he's on a part of the world that's definitely being plundered and, and destroyed, and actually at, at some point he is captured in a in a desperate battle and actually uh, being hauled off uh, to become a uh, to become a slave. And and in the equatorial kingdoms, a common thing to do with uh, the various slaves is to basically keep them drugged to uh, to make them more docile slaves and 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 uh, more willing to be combatants as as gladiators and things like that. And since he is a warrior, that's exactly his fate. They, they drag him off and they throw him in an arena uh, and, and turn him into to a gladiatorial slave. So uh, the lyrics are meant to, to, to show his confusion. He's not exactly sure what's going on, what exactly has happened to him. He's got, he's got memories that are kind of leaking in of, of who he is and, and you, know, his, uh, you know, his loss of freedom. But for the most part, he's just, he's just dealing with... Uh, all the all the madness, these these cheering crowds, and he's he's got to fight off uh, you know all of his opponents in the arena. He's training with these guys. He he doesn't really understand 
necessarily what's going on and would certainly like to get out of this situation. And uh, that that's the sort of confusion that we're trying to convey with the lyrics here. There's a previous song where he actually, uh, he actually sees that amongst the different slaves, there's a particular uh, love interest that, that, that somebody he's, he's taken a fancy to. And, and at the end of the Lotus Warrior song, it's, that's what he's clinging to is that it's just this, this one clear memory that he has that there's, you know, he does have this love interest. And by focusing on her, He's trying to clear his mind and keep his keep his head as clear as it can possibly be for uh, you know potentially eventual escape and uh, you know get, get regaining his freedom at some point. Yeah, it sounds like uh, these lyrics are going to be you know really draw you into the world of Dragon Kings and Kaidus and really give you a different uh, view than just say reading reading a book. Yeah, that, I mean that's my hope, and that's uh, I've always thought that that listening to something like uh, uh, you know Russia's Hemispheres or something like that, that that even listening to twenty minutes of, of of song and lyrics has sometimes created a more vivid image in my mind of a place than reading you know a, a, a thousand page novel or a series of novels even at that point. Um, I think it's a really effective. Uh, uh, means of of getting across a, a specific uh, feeling and a mood and and an emotional impact that's not, you know kind of unmatched. There's there's uh, something to be said for that. Uh, you know, if you hear the right song, it really it can really touch you in a way that that other media you know really can't. And even on the you know sort of om- almost juvenile kind of end, you get that hey turn it up kind of moment. <laughs> right. You know that that's a great feeling, and I'm hoping we can we can make that happen several times with the. Uh, the songs we're creating for Dragon Kings. Nice. So far we've heard of Lotus Warrior and Onward Mighty Wagons as song titles. Do you have any other song names that you can tell us about? We've got a, a lot of working titles. I know that those two are fairly solid because the lyrics are definitely all together there. Uh, some are a little more in question. I know that at one point we have, uh, uh, we have a tale that's, that's sort of, we're, we've got titled Among the Peaceful, where at some point in the future of this, you know, say the midpoint of this, this adventurer's or hero's story, he actually does break free, gets away from the chaos of, of the decaying world around him and finds himself among, among a uh, race of people who have largely insulated themselves from, from the worst things that are happening to the decaying world of Kytus. And while he's there, not only does he get a chance to rest, but among the peaceful, they actually kind of give him the lowdown. This is where he learns in more specifics a lot of the oral tradition of who were the Dragon Kings, what was it like when those beneficent rulers kind of washed over the world. And, uh, you know, almost and it creates sort of a sense of anger that, you know, there was a terrific world here at one point under their watchful eyes now that they've gone for whatever reasons that they're gone things are really turning bad and and he's honestly angry about it but you know that, that's that's right now that's called among the peaceful is a track that we've got there and uh, you know there are several more it's it's pretty exciting putting all this together on the Sharkbone podcast, you talked about uh, putting out a set of tracks with no lyrics, just uh, just for an ambiance of, in the game, like when people are actually playing. Mm-hmm. What other ideas do you have along those lines? Well, that that idea was actually sparked to me by um, I heard, and, and this may be just anecdotal, but uh, several years ago when Nine Inch Nails was putting out some new CD at the concerts they were giving before that CD came out, they were. They were sort of leaving discs and uh, and memory sticks around with just pieces of unfinished songs on them, just to kind of whet the appetite of the fan base that was out there. Seems smart. Um, people were finding these things and saying, "Well, what is this? It's like well, you know, this has got a bass and a guitar track, or this just fades in, you know, one introduction or something like that." Mm-hmm. And, and and you know, they were using it strictly as a marketing tool. You know, that sort of that sort of resonated with me that. Uh, you know, there's no reason that that uh, once a finished piece of music is created, that we can't make it available. Given modern technology, mm-hmm. we can't easily make it available to people uh, so that they could they could piece it together any way that they want it. We can. Uh, I think it'll be easy for us, and I want to make available, frankly, individual tracks on all the songs. I mean, if you just want you know, the whole track with none of the vocals, here it is. If you want just the vocals, here it is. If you want 
just the guitar leads. Here they are, those kinds of things, and then people can can play with them. They can so they can put their, together their own uh, pieces of ambient music using these. But it will also be very easy for us to stitch together and create longer pieces of of lyrics free music that people can use for backgrounds as they're playing the game as well. Yeah, that sounds fun. As far as movies are concerned, whenever I hear the somebody talk about a movie, let's say somebody brings up Star Wars, that theme music just comes to mind. Sure. They bring up Star Trek as far as the, the movies or the original series, you know, those themes come to mind. I mm-hmm. I have some ambition that uh, Dragon Kings will be the first game setting where when somebody says Dragon Kings, that theme music will just come to mind. People will that that will be the first thing that people think of. That'd be awesome. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm certainly hoping. We're we've got a lot of tracks that I think are powerful enough that it could fit that bill. Well, great. Thanks for talking to us about the music. Uh, I'm sure everybody's very appreciative about uh, your forthcomingness about um, <laughs> all the tracks and uh, kind of the process. Uh, I think is really interesting. Sure. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Dragon Kings podcast. Follow us on Twitter at the Dragon Kings. You can find us on our website at www.dragonkingsproject.com or on Facebook or Google+.